Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Real Up My Park from Scratch. We're at episode number 22 and we are back here. Raygate Lake, our UK ultra-realistic, stupidly detailed theme park, which is now starting to really test the beast. Uh, we're in phase three. This is our park here. Um, so if you're only just joining us, welcome aboard. You are all absolutely welcome, no matter how new or how old you are here. You are all very, very welcome. And thank you for supporting for your support thank you for joining us thank you for everything that you guys do as, as a community so we're in phase three we're in the home stretch we've just got this part of the park that we're left dealing with um and we're going to be focusing our attentions on this kind of area here in this episode so previously in the last episode sorry that's a big brother reference for those of you that don't know there's a guy called marcus bentley and he's geordie accent he goes previously and I do a really bad accent of him. Uh, I'm not even sorry. <laughs> I'm not even sorry. So yeah, this was our previous uh, previous episode. We were working on the rapids. Um, and we were putting everything in. And we're starting to get everything ready for our big backstage episode. That I think I'm now starting to like promote more than the actual series finale. <laughs> uh, but we're doing a backstage episode where we're going to do all the warehouses. And all the staff facilities. The extra, wear, uh, the extra maintenance warehouses. And the missing railway sheds and stuff like that so anyway that's not this episode this episode we are going to be in this kind of area and it's roller coaster time um so as you probably already are aware and as you will have known from previous episodes raygate lake is very much a park that focuses on easily identifiable easily marketable unique roller coasters so we've got ourselves for example the wooden roller coaster the stand-up roller coaster the slc inverted coaster we've got a booster bikes launch we've got a junior kids coaster we've got a wing coaster so you can see straight away oh and we've got the Eurofighter to the other side behind me um so you can already see that the park is gearing up with these uniquely identifiable roller coasters and up until this point there's one very obvious coaster that's missing one that spins so we have to consider raygate's law uh l-o-r-e law um and we have to consider the backstory of the park, knowing that they would have had cheaper installations that were easy to install, compact, and they didn't take up much effort, time, and space. So, we're not talking Mac, Mark, Mac, this time round. Um, maybe for another project, I will probably do one. Uh, but for this one, it's going to be the Marathon uh, Spinners. I think that's how you say it. There's loads of awful pronunciations in this intro right uh, <laughs> i'm really sorry uh so yeah we're going for the maura uh spinner and we're going for something along the lines of spinball wizard and uh dragon's fury so i reckon without further ado let's just cut to the first update and see how the layout turns out shall we so it's a beautiful cross between Dragon's Fury at Chessington Worlds of Adventure and also Spinball Wizard at Alton Towers uh, we've got ourselves a maura spinning coaster is it maura or is it maura I'm going to mispronounce it throughout the video anyway, so I don't think it matters. Uh, so, one thing that I find with building these coasters is they're both difficult to create, but also easy to create at the same time. In the sense that it's easy enough to make a train spin. You just put loads of twists and turns, and you focus on twists and turns more than you do drops and rises, right? So, as long as you're, as long as you're encompassing those, you've got a really good, easy layout to make. But it's also difficult in the sense that you have to profile the track correctly in order to make it real. So what you'll tend to find is that they will always have these well overbanked heartline roll curves. So you have to use the banking offset in Planet Coaster to get them to sort of sway and swing out and everything. And again, it's that principle that I talk about of imagining that you're in a car and your back end is supposed to swing out as you t uh, go around a corner that kind of element so you notice like here is really banked offset is the banking is really offset and uh the same way like here and into this s bend turn as well is really offset but you'll also notice that in some places there's no banking offset or there's no banking at all and the reason that you do that is because you want to either kill a spin or instigate a spin so for example we're coming into here and the the train is already going to be spinning in some capacity because of the uh the, the bank timmelman that we've got here and then we're coming straight into a brake run so you don't want it to be able to be hitting this brake run whilst still spinning so you use the non-banked turns to kill that spin so that it goes through the brake run pretty much static and then it reinstigates the spin as it goes down it through the helix and then into the actual uh, the S curve or the snake curve um, and likewise again 
over here. So I've just used the non-banked turn just to kill the spin that it has coming out of the S, the snake, uh, into this brake run. And then it also means then it's traveling at a slower speed, so it's not going to spin as much coming into the final part of the course. So you have to be quite clever with how you're... Uh, how you're actually designing the ride and so in terms of design specification then and a tour of the ride so we come from the station uh, so obviously a normal loading station I uh, have actually ended up swapping around the entrance and the exit I think because the loading of this coaster in Planet Coaster is already pretty bad anyway I don't think this is going to make much of a difference in the same principle or the opposite principle to the junior coaster we had where we've actually got them the correct way round um, I don't think we're going to see much of a, a, a problem here. In fact, we use we you do this, don't we, over on the log flume as well, actually, and it doesn't really affect it. So, because the station's really small. So anyway, we come out of the coaster and we go into an immediate brake run. So we just to just to instigate a block more than anything, um, and then we go into the uh, spin enabler. So it's straight away it's it's got spin enabled comes into the lift hill lift hills on these spinning coasters can range anywhere between 30 degrees and 45 degrees uh, it doesn't ma doesn't really matter it depends on your actual coaster and what you're trying to achieve from it so I went for 35 uh, on this one and they have ridiculously fast lift hills like probably the fastest of any coaster I think I've ever seen um, because the trains are really light so it can just throw it up the lift hill with no problem at all carry on you know do 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 what you need to do uh, and then it enters into the first curve which is a bit of a, a figure of eight really from the top so it comes into like a real off banked uh, curve just to instigate the first part of the spin and then it comes into the opposite side the opposite way around just to kill the spin in time for the drop um, so it comes into the brake run into the drop and into the overbanked Immelman so these are so common. I think every single decent spinning coaster from Mara I've ever seen have have got these. Uh, and of course, Dragon's Fury have the, has it, and so does Spinball Wizard. Interestingly, though, Dragon's Fury has a bit of a banked curve beforehand because it doesn't go in and out at 180 degrees. It actually performs a turn, so it sort of flips it around a little bit. Um, and then it comes into a double up. Um, you don't often see these, but I wanted to kill a little bit of the speed that we get out of this first drop. And I wanted to, to give it a bit of thrill and a bit of air time. So it goes into a double up um, and then into that uh, spin killing curve ready for the brake run. And then it comes around the brake run, off the brake run, sorry, and then round into the the snake curve the snake pass and into the next brake run and it comes down another drop into another s bend into the final brake run and then it comes into a, a helix and the helix is quite tight because we're, by now the train's not doing much speed so you're not pulling many g's at this point so it comes into one final tight helix and then it just comes into a really long drawn out final bend and the idea of this is it kills the last bit of the momentum it kills the last bit of the spin it kills the last bit of the speed so that it can hit the brake run at a relatively decent decent sort of speed but what i did do is i i used the booster bikes as reference um just to create a bit of a bunny hop so it gives, still gives a little bit of a, a decent ride. It still gives a bit of a whoop, bit of airtime, bit small pop of airtime. And in terms of maintenance areas for this, then I've actually I've gone for a bit of a hybrid again between Dragon's Fury and Spinball Wizard, in the sense that the maintenance areas for these are tiny because the trains are tiny and the trains aren't that complex. So all all you need on this one is just some storage for the trains on the outside. So this isn't going to be under cover; it's actually going to be outside, um, and then a really small shed with some kind of access and actually because of the positioning of where this is in the park and the fact that this is actually prime premium space I didn't want it unlike the booster bikes I didn't want it to be dominated in this area by the maintenance shed so this is fitted in quite nicely and then all I'm going to do is just hide it at the front with some shops and everything sort of here so that's that's what we're going for in terms of customer area uh, guest area i'm just put some sort of like games and everything along one side just again so i can hide the fence that's hiding the backstage area uh, so i can put something in front of it just to hide it this is obviously going to be a photoshop area and um, the ride photos of course we're going to have ride photos and then the queue line itself i've made really compact 
Um, I've sort of packed as much queue in as I possibly can into the smallest amount of space while still interacting with the ride. And of course, it's got uh, fast track on here. So the fast track will go around the outside of the main queue. And then this will all have like foliage and, and stuff in just to give it a bit more cover. It's quite important actually to put a little bit of cover onto this one. Unlike where we were talking about the SLC where we intentionally made it unloved. This would need to have some kind of cover because the queue is slow moving. So you don't really want people to be baking in the sun. And I know that goes completely against everything we said with the SLC. The SLC was done with like malicious intent. It was just thrown in and they didn't make any effort. Whereas this one, I think they, they probably would have made a little bit of effort at least. But we're going for generic theme. We're not going for anything heavily themed. All I've then done is I've started the prep work, prep work for the stuff that's coming later as well. So I have bought the path around this way. I've made another plaza area here for something that's coming in here. Um, and I've just put in a flat ride. Uh, and I, I've always wanted this one either here or here uh, in this space. I've always wanted this in this position. So I've just put this in now. I know that this coaster is this size. Um, so I'm going to be able to finish off the queue line and I'll probably get this done this episode. And then I'm going to throw it open to you guys to decide. And I don't know why I'm going to do this because I know it's going to end up in a 50-50 coin, coin toss because it always does with, with you lot. But it's fine because I like it. Um, so I'm going to throw it open at the end of the episode as to what comes into this space. Um, I've got two ideas that I want your opinion on. So I will throw that open. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm sitting with, with the coaster. It's sitting quite nicely on the profile of the park. Um, you get some pretty decent sights from like here. For example, you can see up the lift hill. You'd be able to get some great views from the train as, as you're going past. Um, but then it's also nicely hidden from here as well. So you just poach through the trees. Um, but it then comes back into full view when you're face on. There we go face on with the uh, uh with the screaming swing so yeah i, I like i like it i like its positioning so i'm going to carry on building anyway and i will see you for the next update all right so i don't know how obvious the changes are for this update but uh, i've done a booster bikes on this one you know where we had to go back and add loads of customization to the actual ride to make sure that it was as realistic as possible so i've taken all of the documents that i can find on maura spinning coasters and find out sort of like the layouts and the mechanics and how everything is put together and pieced together in terms of safety and uh, maintenance and access and all of that sort of stuff and so that's what I've done I've actually gone around the ride again and I've made those changes so I wanted to update you on on how that's looking right now the obvious one you can see is the maintenance area but there's not some there's some not so obvious ones over here because it's just a mess of track so let's actually do a tour of the ride shall we and see what we've done so inside the actual station area itself I've added in the heat uh, heaters for the wheels so in colder temperatures these coasters really really struggle to run in the cold so you tend to put heaters underneath we've done this elsewhere in the park with some of the other rides uh, and some of the other rides don't have it because they don't need it but these ones definitely definitely do so I've added it underneath and along with it I've added then just all of the maintenance panels and, and the cabling and, and stuff that you would that you would tend to find and then at the bottom of the lift hill I've just added the concrete pad um, and also just some electric cables and everything just to bring that to bring that to life Then you've got CCTV and the lights that are, uh, that are going up the lift hill so at night time you can evacuate and, and, and everything so I don't have to add those as part of the final detailing pass and then comes the first biggie so all of these spinners underneath the top of the lift hill so that you can maintain the chain lift and everything uh, because they are so rapid and because they are so intense uh, you tend to find a platform that sits underneath that the top end of the lift hill and it's supported by this uh, horizontal beam that goes between the uh, the two uppermost supports uh, and then on there you also have a cage ladder that takes you from the pan uh, panel from the actual cage itself goes up to the lift hill uh, catwalk itself and then you just got the uh, electric maintenance stuff at the top here as well so you can now service the chain from underneath and the idea is that this would be a bit of a crawl space it's perfectly fine to be supported like this underneath because it's only supporting the weight of one person and maybe some equipment so you're not worrying about balance and everything i checked this out for real because i was like i can't believe that this would be so off center and so off kilter that it wouldn't be a problem a topple problem uh, but it tends to be attached along the way so you're okay to, to have it to have it like this and this is exactly how they're designed obviously there's some pieces in planet coaster missing and stuff that we can't really make it 
fully complete, but you know it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the first bit. The other bit as well is that these uh, catwalks tend to be much closer to the track. So obviously in Planet Coaster, it's been designed that the the train can rotate through a full 360 degrees at any point in the ride. So including lift hill. So that's why the catwalks have all been placed so far away from the track. And in real life, you would probably control the spin. And I think the only one that doesn't is Spinball Wizard. But they, yeah, the only one that doesn't is Spinball Wizard. Um, but the catwalk is slightly further away. So with this one, I've just left it as it is. You know, we don't have the facility to create our own custom catwalks to the same standard that the the, the in-game one has. So I've just left it as it is. So we come around the first bend uh, and then come up to the first uh, break run. And I've actually decided, I've taken this awkward decision to do custom catwalks and custom um, break runs for these because of that exact reason. I needed the ability to attach them to the uh, tracks underneath and I needed the ability to have the support structure, so the, the horizontal support structure here. Um, and the only really way that you can do it and integrate it properly is just by doing your own custom catwalk. It just works so much better. So I've just used the, you know, the yellow and black signs with the uh, steel mesh points on it. That's all I've used um, and just coloured them grey. Nothing special. Um, I think it was Shiftsy's video I saw that technique and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. That's a genius idea. Um, and I just followed then Spinball Wizard's lead with the escape stairs and they're just spiral stairs that, that go down. And you can imagine actually that this would be swaying quite a lot <laughs> because these coasters sway a lot, scarily. But this uh, kind of setup is perfectly acceptable. Um, it's going to distribute the weight and the, and the forces and everything down and it will then dis uh, disperse all the forces down the two. Uh, down the two supports this side so that's fine come round into the uh, overbank Dimmel Immelman and then into the next one and again it's just the same setup I've just co copied and pasted it and slightly tweaked it to add some different facilities and whatever in here um, oh it's gone really quiet I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if you can tell uh, yeah so I've just added in the uh, the extra bits here and then we come around into the snake pass and then into the next uh, break run exactly the same setup and then we come around into the uh, S bend, and then to the final, uh, the final break run. This is one. This one's slightly different uh, because I've had to uh, make this straddle the helix, so it's a slightly different setup, and it's slightly longer just to bring the escape stairs away from the track slightly. Um, so it is out of the way. So I've had to extend this one a little bit, uh, and then you come down the stairs, and then you've got the escape point coming off into the station. And so what would then happen is if you were evacuating the ride, you'd come up here, and there'd be a platform and everything that you can put up to, to bring people across the station. You can't make them escape out this way uh, because you've obviously got the train in the way. So this is your only escape point. And then what I've done. Oh, forgive the trees uh, what I've then done is um, I've lined all of the important parts with don't die fencing uh, because this is still going to be a, an active ride area now typically the ride isn't going to be running if uh, the coaster is being evacuated it tends to come to a stop but there is a possibility very small but there is a possibility that the trains may move and then they end up actually going to their next to their next break run or valleying or, or whatever they may do so that it may be a, a, a possibility that a train would move it's very small so you still want to add all of your fencing and everything to, to block it off and that includes the area for the escape route as well and um, so if you are evacuating they can't go anywhere but the path you know that you want to direct them as safely out as you possibly can and then you just come out into the actual queue line itself so there'll be escape points and everything in the, in the queue line to use so then we come into the, the final helix and we come around the, the last bend, which is, as I said before, it's designed to get rid of as much of the kinetic and spin en energy as it possibly can. So it crawls around this final brake run and then comes into the maintenance area. And so the, the maintenance areas for these are so incredibly simple and so incredibly uh, primitive in comparison to everything else that we've got because they are just a simple dogleg piece of track with a shed this shed is actually probably way too big for what we need like it wouldn't have ventilation it like if you look at spinballs and dragons fury on google earth you'll see they are just garden sheds with just parts in because these aren't complicated complex trains they're not complex technology it's just a few nuts and bolts a few wheels uh, the actual restraint mechanisms 
and this, the chassis. And so you'll tend to find that you don't need to do a lot of servicing on them. You'll just literally dismantle them and take them off site, do what you need to do. It's not like the other roller coaster trains that come apart into a billion pieces. Um, so yeah, you just have enough uh, track along here just to store the number of trains that you've got. So in this case, it's four. So you'd be able to store the four trains along here. And then you just have a really, really simple transfer track mechanism here. Um, so this is directly stolen from uh, Dragon's Fury as much as possible in the sense you just have this support structure and then the idea is the train would come up to this point and it would then just slide across and then get pushed back by the drive tires and you then just have some sort of catwalk that leads you back to the station um, as well as the official guest catwalk the, the official evacuation catwalk and then you just got some stairs that come down into the ride maintenance area just in case you need to do any work on the under track or if you need to access the actual um, transfer track itself so that's where it's at uh, and then I just put gravel down and uh, just similar reasons for us doing it in the um, booster bikes area it's just just a, a well-worn area and I'll probably put some um, greenery and stuff in here just to make it look like it's overgrowing slightly so it's not so new and not so clean um, and then that brings us back quite nicely to the station and so I'm already starting to have a look at the um, design of the station and, and how I want it to be so I've chosen two fence types uh, I don't know how they're going to work out. I'm not particularly keen on this one fence type, but it's very similar to the one that we've got over on the Junior Coaster, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to use it. And then we've got uh, this picket fencing. Um, I found it, and I was like, I wonder what this is actually going to look like. I don't use it that often um, in any of my parks, so I thought I'm actually going give it, to give it a go and see what happens. Um, so this is how it's now now sitting on the skyline. So. I think the customization makes it look so much better. It's that it's that SLC moment we had last time when we put the when I put the cage on the top and I was like, of course that was the missing detail, and now it's just brought it to life. And so I just wanted to show you all of those all of those details. So my next port of call is to finish the station, get the queue line fencing done, and start the start the shop. And then that will probably actually for this episode be the penultimate update um, because this is quite a simple. To put to put together it's it's time consuming in the sense of there's a lot to do uh, but it's quite simple in the in the sense of the area that we're working with we're not talking you know rapids or we're not talking the wing coaster where it's days and days and days worth of work so anyway let's get to the next update all right so it's penultimate update time and not that you would know it but there's quite a lot of detailing that's gone on between the last two updates and the main bulk of that detailing and the main bulk of that effort goes in this form of custom fencing your queue lines because it's not just about putting the fences down i also like to create some kind of a concrete pad so i use the firehouse windowsills to line off the outside of the queue line and then i go back in and backfill all of all of the concrete and the reason that i do that as you've seen in the previous episodes is so that i can hide the the grass gap that you get so I don't like using the um, curbs that come with the queue lines and so I always come back and I just then make it an actual concrete pad and then you have to go through a design process as well so with this one I went through probably five or six iterations of different queue line fences but I settled on having um, an outside almost like perimeter fence and then the inside cheaper fence I think I did it on the booster bikes as well um, and then what I've also realized is I've taken a little bit of unintended inspiration from Tornado Springs at Paulton Parks you know the new area that's opening in 2021 uh, in the sense that they've got a spinning coaster and also the gyro um, and I was like oh yeah, this is all of the spinning stuff but there's kind of like a reason why I've put these two rides at the at the front here um, and in the next episode we're going to be dealing with the the bigger flat ride offering so there's going to be a load more flats that are going to come in this area and possibly down this area as well so uh, anyway the other things that I've done uh, that you'll notice is the station so we now have a station building I wanted to keep this really really simple um, it was going to be far too obvious to theme this around things like tornadoes and water vortexes and all, and all of that sort of stuff I didn't want to fall into that trap because that's just I know Raygate Lake is lazy but that's just like the proper lazy theming and remembering as well that the wing coaster that we've got and also the rapids is probably and the western area are probably the most themed areas that this park is ever going to get and so we had to I had to remember that I need to strip this back to generic um because that was the whole purpose of the park to start with so keeping it generic and that's what I settled on just this really nice simple 
uh, station building that's very similar actually to the Eurofighter um, in style and in, and, in, and in design so that's where we've that's where we've settled need still needs a bit of like fine detailing and touching up like I still need to put some concrete in here to hide this gap and I still need to move this bin which is starting to bother me um, so I need to do some tidying up and whatever but that's the next phase so here's, going back to the queue lines then, here's the, the queue line for uh, this coaster, this doesn't have a name at the moment. Um, and yeah, I, I took a lot of queues actually from um, Dragon's Fury's uh, queue line at Chessington World of Adventures in the sense that it's just one big penned in cattle pen with a few gaps in the middle just so you can put some vegetation and, and swap it up a little bit. And that's exactly what I've managed to achieve here, I quite like it. Um, and then I've just put all of the, the curbing along the outside here ready for the concrete padding to come in. Um, and I don't, like I say, I'm not going to deal with this back end here because this is the next episode. I already know I've got a list of flats that I'm going to put in. So I already know what's going into the area. Um, so I'll deal with that next, next episode. But yeah, I've got the concrete padding ready in this area. And I've also started the process of the buildings and, and everything. And again, again, this is all going to make sense when what comes here is going to come here card agreement so uh i've what i've done here is i've i've copied across the game stalls uh, from the other side and i've seen this in many of our parks actually where we just use a blueprint for game stalls uh, we just use the same design and we just plop them around the park and then just swap them up so that's what i've done here is i've, I've copied them across from the other side of the park for that consistency and then i've just moved where all of the items are so they're not a direct copy it's not an obvious direct copy and to also change some of the colors to make it fit into the area so that's what I've that's what I've done here, and then coming over to the main building uh, that we've got for grab and go. Um, I really, really struggled with this. I completely lost inspiration, and I must have sat staring at the shops just there for what must have been two or three hours, not doing anything, and it was starting to frustrate me. And I just built through it, and this is what I've ended up with. I mean, I'm not completely happy with it, but it's what I've ended up with, so I'm, yeah, it'll do. It's it's good enough for the area. Um, it sort of lines off the area quite nicely. The whole purpose of this of this grab and go shop, by the way, was to hide the shed in the background from the guests, and it does that. So, as far as as far as design is concerned, it's it's mission accomplished. You know, it's it's not elegant, it's not beautiful, and it's not meant to be. Um, that's coming later. So anyway, the grab and go unit. Um. I love I love these chalkboards. Um, I think I think they're KPRs um, chalkboards. Sorry if they're not, um, but they are so good, so 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 good. And they're already like themed to the smoothies, to hot dogs, to um, Missy Frita, and then Missy Good, and also uh, Foxy Coffee as well. So they just look awesome. And then these ones definitely are KPR um, posters that came along just to finish off this this sort of blank space that I had. So yeah, I mean, it's turned out all right, but like I said, I'm not completely, I'm not thrilled by them. Um, and then coming over here, I don't think this was done last time. Uh, I've just finished off the uh, the units, the games unit. And again, this is a copy across from the other side of the park for consistency. Uh, and then I've just changed up the games and everything that are uh, in here just to give it the element of, of actual completion. And then the photo booth. And again, this is another building that I'm not particularly thrilled with. Um, it needs a bit of touching up, like I need to fill in this gap and stuff. Um, but again, it's, it's supposed to be a bit of a thrown down affair. It's not supposed to be... A well put together themed area like the rapids and the wing coaster are uh, this was supposed to just be thrown down because they threw a coaster down so that's kind of the the whole element a bit unkempt a bit unloved but not as unloved as the slc obviously uh, so the yeah, photo the photoshop itself just your, your typical photoshop setup um it's nothing particularly nothing particularly special uh with it. it just needs its photos and people adding now um and obviously i've copied these across from the rapids shop so uh, that's that and the one thing I forgot to show you um, in the last update was the inside of here so it is just a shed nothing more than that it's just a bit of storage it's just a bit of maintenance stuff it's a, the, the electric cupboards and, and all of that sort of stuff there's nothing really major going on in here not like the Eurofighter uh, maintenance shed was uh, and then outside you've already seen um, and I've just added some final details and some final like touches along here um, but it's quite nicely hidden. It's, it was weird. Is that yes? It's very obvious that it's there as you're as you're passing it around the final corner. Um, but it's also quite nicely hidden 
the other thing as well that I need to be aware of and I need to find a, a, a proper fix for uh, is the sight line here in the sense that the shed is quite dominant on this part of the sight line so I'm going to need to use nature and everything quite effective to sort of hide it and draw the attention back to uh, this gyro ride and also the spiral coaster and then the train track that's coming through so that's where we are at right now my last my next bit then is um all to do with the final final detailing phase up to about here and then up to the railway track and then we should be good to go so let's watch this come to life shall we all right then, just like that, the done for now stamp comes out and we've got ourselves a finished area. I've done everything that I think I wanted to do for this for now because the next episode is going to be about bringing the area to life and making it all make sense. We're going to be adding loads and loads and loads of flat rides in the next episode because we need to sort of get this back area towards the left hand side in a position that's going to be ready for card agreement. So it's kind of like... It's ready to it's ready to be done, um, and so this this is this is what we've ended up with. We've got two rides, and I've kind of gone for that whole idea of sibling rivalry or like twisted sisters and stuff like that. Uh, so I've gone for two names, Spyro and Gyro. So our <laughs> so, so unique, right? Uh, so I've, I've ended up calling the pendulum ride uh, Gyro, and then we've got our uh, spinning coaster our marathon spinning coaster uh, called spyro and uh yeah so this is what i was talking about before with the concrete padding and everything it just brings everything to life i think it's like it just creates this this unified space you know ev everything is nice and clean and tidy uh, there's no gaps in the path there's no there's nothing like garish to look at and actually it, it makes the the fencing system that i've chosen also make sense as well when you put the concrete and stuff down um it just creates that uniform sort of profile doesn't it and because it's because it's flat it's relatively easy relatively easy to do i wanted this area to be flat because the area to the left hand side is not going to be so flat uh, you'll, you'll see why um so yeah this is the the queue line then so i've just added all of the details you know the usual bins and uh lamp posts and stuff so we've got the no fast pass on this one uh, but we've got the queue and i quite like actually how the queue isn't just one big pad of uh, zigzag one big cat, uh, cattle pen it's sort of like multiple different little cattle pens and actually in reality if the park was quiet you could cut off the cattle pen here and you could cut it off here and then they would queue round and here and they would just queue round this way and you'd like have a little dog leg here so it's actually worked out quite nicely this is pretty much how you'd find it in a, in a proper park setup um so yeah I, I quite like how that's how that's turned out so i've just added in then picnic benches and everything all along the the center i like doing this because it breaks up the central central parts i could just easily put flower beds and stuff in the middle right or just have it as one big plaza well, I quite like the idea, especially with what's coming uh, in later episodes on the left-hand side. Uh, I like the idea of being able to split the guest flow into two by having benches in the middle. So, uh, And then you've got the game stalls, and then you've got more benches. So it's almost like splits them out into a V and then brings them back into a V uh, later on. So, yeah. And then just down by our grab-and-go units, I'm still not sold on them, but they're, they're okay. They do what they need to do, right? So um, I might come back and revisit them once I know how the area feels with the new additions. Uh, just see whether any new theme pops out at me so i might i might retheme it but for now it's it's as good as it's as good as we're going to get right it looks believable enough um and i'm uh, good is good enough in this instance i think uh for this one i mean not every part of a theme park is perfect right it's uh ev everywhere has bits you know like thor park has got the bit run by loggers leap it's just an absolute dump um so ev everywhere everywhere has that but this bit's now really come together quite nicely I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out now that it's all one big pavement area that, that sort of v's into the the exit of the ride and now i've got some foliage just minimal foliage along here i just wanted some color um, and then just some fake color as well or some fake flower they're not fake flowers are they they're not flower bed i mean um so yeah we've just got some flower pots and stuff along here just to bring the area to life a little bit and then from peep level it actually looks all right you can't see the uh, you can't see the maintenance area as such from below you can still get some pretty decent shots of gyro and you've also got some pretty good sight lines of spyro whilst we're at it so it's it's worked out worked out quite nicely the fence coming down the um the exit path is actually quite nicely topped this area off that was the one thing actually i think that was making it feel for me that something was missing and I hadn't realized really that it was that much of a bigger deal um, but it has actually made sort of like a difference especially like here 
it sounds really silly. Like I can't, I can't like explain it properly. I can't articulate it properly. But it was just there was something about it that was bugging me, and it wasn't until I finished this this fencing, I was like, oh yeah, that's what it is. Um, so the queue line then for Spyro, um, you're used again. You're used to this idea of cattle penning, and you're used to me the idea of me using the concrete to to sort of fill it out. And this is exactly what I, what I mean. Look, you've now don't have any of the gaps on the queue lines. It's just one nice big pad of concrete, and even down to this side as well, where I couldn't quite get the station to marry up to the the actual side of the queue line itself. Um, so all all you do is you just put concrete pad in and just make it one concrete thing. Um, and it just looks natural. It just looks as it as it as it as it should. Um, and you get some really really good views of the coaster here as well. So uh, you've got like the first drops and you've got a couple of turns and everything that are sort of in in this area. And you can just about see as you can, it's got me coming now the top of the lift hill. So actually you've got some good sight of the coast you've got some really good path interaction here so it turned out quite nicely quite quite pleased with oh hello uh <laughs> good old camera uh, quite pleased with how that's turned out um and then so coming into the station not really much has changed in the station i moved the bin um because it was in the way of everything else i've added in our staff members I just added in the warning signage as well um cctvs and, and stuff and then i've also just done some station signage too so you've got the exit signs and you've also got the um the, the entrance signs as well just so it's clear which way which way around as much especially as we've mixed the two uh, we've mixed the two entrance and exits up so that's fine and then as I said before uh, I've just put the overgrowth in amongst all of the um, gravel down here just to make it look a little bit older than it actually is and a bit more unkempt uh, and it's it's sort of brought that a bit to life quite nicely I also changed the color of the gravel as well I've noticed that I always use it in the light gray that it comes with naturally so I've ended up using a darker gray because it gives it that more weathered effect so that's what I've that's what I've done there um, and now I think this area is looking way better and I'm much happier with it like from this view especially way happier with it than I was before I did the last update so it was a little bit touch and go especially with the disappointment of this of this hut and the and the creators block that came of it but actually I'm really chuffed with with how this has turned out and I can't wait for the flat rides and everything to be down here because at the moment my camera angles are very deliberate right so you've got like that is the that is the sight line because this that's where the depth is you can see the back end of the park and you can see everything that's like right over the lake and stuff um so when we get this side done it's going to be it's going to be good this is going to be a bit of an oasis and so we need to make sense of this area right so at the moment they're just two rides that sort of like stuck out in the middle and we've got this massive dead spot like on this pavement here so that we need to do something about that so the next episode i'm going to be focusing on this area here and putting in a ton of flat rides no no coaster i don't think i don't think we're going to really get a chance to do another one for the next episode card agreement so uh, it's like it's going to be flat ride city a little bit like the um the Hyder park uh area around by colossus and not it's not going to be as cheesy as that and i'm not going to you know just bluntly put them in a, in a um, flat line i was going to say in a circle and be done with it it's going to be more considered and i also want a flat here i know exactly what flat i'm going to put in here because i was able to find one that made that made this area make sense and gives, gives me an opportunity to bring the railway down so this brings me quite nicely actually onto the episode after that and that what there's a something that's going to come in here but i need your opinion on what that something is going to be so i had originally des decided or had originally had it on my plans that i wanted to have both what they call a second gate uh, and also um a dark ride now a second gate is an attraction that you pay for once you're in the park so for example it would be sea life for alton towers or dungeons at alton towers um although you don't pay for sea life but it would be a secondary attraction to the actual park itself so my question to you guys is what would you prefer would you prefer second gate like an aquarium or would you prefer dark ride like a shooting ride so leave your comment down below and let me know um voting will be open until tuesday and i'm going to need an episode in hand to make preparations for it so that's why i'm not doing it voting close on tuesday for the episode next week it'll be the episode after that so what do you want second gate or dark ride um so guys thank you so much for for coming along on the journey today thank you so much for 
putting up with my creator's block <laughs> and it's actually I'm quite pleased with how the area's turned out now so uh, you know what to do if you want to know when the next episode comes out the subscribe button is there every single one of you absolutely helps the channel every single time you subscribe like and comment so uh, just thank you all for that but otherwise until we all speak again you know what to do keep yourselves safe I'll see you next time oh before we go should we go on a ride but I'm going to do this I'm going to say this because I, I haven't pre-recorded the POV yet um, the, the frame rate might be a bit rubbish. I'm going to give it a go anyway. Let's go for a ride.